Well, NASA's Orion capsule has reached the moon. The first visit in 50 years, with the capsule passing within 128 kilometres of the lunar surface during the historic space flight. Its onboard cameras sent back a picture of Earth, a small dot surrounded by blackness. Joining us live now is Fred Watson, Australia's astronomer at large. Fred, good to see you. Thanks for your time. How did this flyby of the moon go? Was it all smooth? Um, it, yes, uh, to use uh, space industry jargon, everything was nominal, uh, which means it was really, really good. Uh, nominal is the, um, the standard expression for things that are expected to take place and did. And yes, that beautiful picture of our planet taken from the distance of the moon. Uh, there were a couple more that I saw, Ash, that had the moon in the foreground, the Earth in the background. It sort of gives you goosebumps to think of this little spacecraft looking back at its home world with our nearest neighbour in the foreground. And uh, you may have noticed, if you saw those, that the back side of the moon, the side that we don't see from Earth, is quite different from the near side. It's uh, very, very sparsely uh, littered with these grey areas that we call seas or maria. Uh, that's just because the geology on the back side of the moon is quite different from the near side. So Orion's exploring all that as we speak. Oh, it's fascinating stuff. I see that uh, an official at NASA, uh, official rather at NASA, said that humans could be living on the moon during this decade. Does that sound mm -hmm. too optimistic to you? What are the steps we need to to make before we get to that point? So, so. Really, uh, Artemis 1 is a precursor to exactly this, and the expectation is that Artemis 3, which is the first one of this series of spacecraft that will touch down on the Moon's surface, that will land uh, in 2025, probably, and so you've got another five years uh, by the end of the decade uh, to have the process of taking astronauts to and from the moon turning into something quite routine. And I can imagine that by the end of the decade, there will be some sort of permanent base on the moon, perhaps akin to the kind of thing that we see in Antarctica, where we have permanent scientific bases there, only, of course, in a much more extreme environment. So when you say that this could become routine, I mean, how dangerous is this still? There's obviously a reason why it's taken decades and decades for us to actually send humans back to the moon. Yes, it's so uh, we, we've had good practice over the last 22 years with a continuous presence in the International Space Station, which of course is in orbit around the Earth at a height of about 400 kilometres, nowhere near as far away as the Moon. Uh, the Moon's more, uh, certainly the spacecraft that we're uh, seeing, uh, watching at the moment, will go more than 400,000 kilometres from Earth uh, as it goes into this distant orbit around the Moon. Uh, but the, the challenge is, uh, once you've established that you can survive in space, and that means the weightlessness and the radiation environment, uh, then it's just a question of tailoring uh, your needs to the particular environment that you're in. So the step forward to land astronauts on the moon and to give them the kind of accommodation that you might need to spend a lot of time there is, uh, to some extent, a matter of engineering. Of course, it's very expensive uh, because taking all the hardware you need to support a community to the lunar surface is not a cheap, uh, not a cheap option. But I think the engineering is is well on its way to being uh, achieved that it will be a possibility i read that that test flight cost 4.1 billion dollars um certainly not cheap do you think that's value for taxpayer money are we, are we getting our <laughs> worth out of this it's always, um, you know, w w what you measure when you're when you're looking at the amount of money that's spent on space flight uh, is the inspiration that comes from that back to our back to our planet, back to our species. Uh, there's a yardstick I always use, Ash, to put these things in perspective, and that is that the uh, the U.S. military runs through a billion dollars every ten hours, uh, and so you know to spend four times that amount uh, on on a lunar mission, which will pave the way to some really really exciting uh, adventures for humankind uh, on the lunar surface. I think it's good value for money. It's all relative, I guess. Fred Watson, always appreciate your analysis. Thanks for joining us.